Bonsoir à tous, goedenavond iedereen en welkom in deze prachtige Henri Le Boeufzaal waar A plus en Bozaar vanavond het genoegen hebben Carmé Pigem uh, te mogen ontvangen voor de laatste lezing van het jaar. Carmé Pigem est l'une des fondatrices du bureau espagnol RCR Architects uh, qui a gagné le Pritzker Prize en mai dernier. En Belgique, ils ont notamment réalisé le crématorium de Hofherde et plus récemment le Walse Croak, en collaboration avec le bureau Gantois Cousse en Goris. Voor ik het woord geef aan Klaas Goris voor een korte introductie, zou ik graag Bozar willen bedanken voor de co-productie van dit evenement. Maar ook bedank ik graag onze waardevolle sponsors en partners, onze structurele partner Febelsem, onze structurele sponsor Assa Ablois Entrance Systems, mais aussi Equiton et Gluon, sans qui cette conférence n'aurait pas pu avoir lieu ce soir. Je tiens également à remercier Sum Project, Ares Real Estate Solutions, Neolit, VK Engineering, Bulot, sans oublier la ville de Bruxelles, de Vlaams Overheid, la Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles et la région Bruxelles-Capitale. Bonne soirée à tous. Goedenavond, bonsoir. Merci surtout à l'organisation du Beaux-Arts de cette invitation à introduire la conférence de ce soir sur l'œuvre de RCR Architectes. Merci Roxane, merci Lisa, merci Iwan, merci. Bonne tarde, spécialement Carmen. C'est un grand honneur pour nous autres Donarvos la bienvenida aquí a Bruselas para esta conferencia. Carmen, 
Je me vous rappelle à Bruxelles il y a presque 23 ans maintenant. Ça nous semble déjà une éternité. Pourquoi donc cette invitation à nous de vous introduire Pour cela, en effet, il faut retourner dans le temps. Voilà. 1995, les Euro Architectural Awards sont créés à Bruxelles. Encore sous le, sous le nom de Aranda Pichem Villalta Architectes, ces trois Catalans, Carmen Pichem, Ramon Villalta et Rafael Aranda, reçoivent le prix dans la catégorie maison avec la réalisation de la Casa Margarita à Olot, dans ce bel endroit au pied des Pyrénées où ils vivent. Cette maison pour la sœur de Ramon Villalta, et donc la belle-sœur de Carmen, est réalisée en 1992 et est un des premiers actes de, de, de leur bureau. À cette occasion, nous avions le plaisir de recevoir une mention spéciale du jury dans la catégorie bâtiment public avec notre bureau, euh, un projet euh, bureau d'ingénieur à Rumbeke. C'est ce point de départ qui nous lie toujours jusqu'à présent. On peut dire le début d'une belle histoire. Une rencontre dans la marche de ce prix nous crée une amitié profonde qui aura pour conséquence qu'on se voit régulièrement à Lot ou à Gand dans les années suivantes. Des conversations, parfois nocturnes, sur par exemple Tao, où le paysage naturel se multiplie. Des visites à leur bureau ou aux projets réalisés ou en réalisation se font dès lors régulièrement. 2015, 2005, dix ans après la première rencontre. Ce dont on parle depuis longtemps se concrétise et on participe en commun pour la première fois à un concours. Ce premier est un concours pour un crématoire à Ophed que vous venez de voir dans le film, près de Louvain. Après plusieurs années de retard, le crématoire ouvre en 2013. Le projet est finalement achevé en 2015, ceci donc dix ans plus tard. 2007, douze ans après la première rencontre, on participe en commun à deux concours d'architecture. Le premier est un concours pour des bureaux, habitations et shopping malls dans le nouveau centre de Dubaï. Ce projet pour une ville dans la ville de 415 000 m2 est remporté, mais connaît une brusque fin en 2009 avec la crise immobilière dans les Émirats unis. Le deuxième projet pour la réconversion d'une centrale électrique à Zwevegem est également remporté est en ce moment en réalisation pour être achevé vers l'été prochain. 2010, donc 15 ans après la première rencontre, nous recevons la commande de réaliser une bibliothèque et un centre de médias à Gand après un concours international. 2017, 22 ans après la première rencontre, la médiathèque de Croc ouvre ses portes très peu après l'annonce que RCR Architects a gagné le prix Pritzker. Dames et heren, het werk van RCR Architects getuigt van een uitzonderlijk niveau en van een, een unieke visie op de architectuur. De stedenbouwkundige kracht van het bouwwerk, of dit in relatie is met het natuurlijke of het stedelijke landschap, vormen het continue onderzoeksterrein van hun architectenteam. De uitzonderlijke landschappelijke kwaliteiten van het vulkanisch landschap rond de Lot waren immers voor RCR architectes het begin van een zoektocht naar abstrahering in hun architectuurtaal. De door hen hierbij aangewende natuurlijke materialen worden zorgvuldig gekozen en op een radicale manier bijeengebracht in een soort van oerruimte waarbij authenticiteit en ruimtelijke ervaring een atmosfeer creëren die aan het lichaam blijft plakken. Nous sommes donc très heureux d'avoir pu vivre ce voyage architectural de ces trois Catalans et leur équipe d'Olot et, et nous leur remercions de tout cœur pour cette amitié profonde qui nous lie. RCR komt ook uit een land dat een bijzonder culturele band had met ons land. Maar niet alles willen wij hiervan onthouden. Keizer Karel, terzijde geboren te Gent, laat nog steeds een vrange herinnering na in Gent. De stad waar onze kantoren gevestigd zijn. 
De Gentenaars noemen zich niet voor niets stroppendragers. Maar Spanje is voor ons ook het land van uitzonderlijke kunstenaars, zoals er zijn Diego Velázquez, Francisco Goya of Francisco de Zubaran. En de invloed in het werk van Rubens of meer recent in het werk van Michael Bormans of Berlinde de Bruyker is een werkelijke verrijking. Culturele eigenheid of artistieke authenticiteit kennen dan ook geen grenzen. L'intégrité culturelle ou l'authenticité artistique ne connaît donc pas de frontières. En ce moment que la Catalogne fait la première page des journaux, nous voulons vous, vous tirer l'attention sur ce riche patrimoine catalan. Non seulement Anthony Gaudi, Salvador Dali, Juan Miró, Anthony Tapies, Pablo Casals ou Jordi Saval et bien d'autres Catalans, ils ont mis la Catalogne sur la carte culturelle mondiale avec leur œuvre particulière. Non, ceci a été prouvé aussi par Carmen Pichem, Ramon Villalta et Rafael Aranda. Il n'est donc pas surprenant qu'ils ont reçu récemment pour leur œuvre le prix Pritzker. Mesdames et messieurs, nous sommes vraiment ravis de vous laisser la parole à Carmen Pichem de RCR Architectes. Estimada Carmen, à tout l'honneur, la parole est Théba. Merci Clash, je suis émoué de, de voir tout, euh, toutes ces images-là qui font partie de, de notre amitié de, depuis longtemps. Je suis très contente, nous sommes très contentes d'être ici. Euh, je vais essayer de parler en anglais pour la conférence. Mon anglais, c'est peu plus mauvais que, que mon français, mais je vais essayer de faire euh, le mieux. Bon, euh, qui c'est euh, Arciar Arciar, c'est euh, Raphaël Aranda, Karma Pigem et Ramon Bilalta. Ça, c'est euh, il y a 30 ans. Donc, euh, euh, 30 years later, <laughs> we are in, in this situation. So, we are uh, sharing a table, we are sharing <clears throat> an, a space. So, uh, for us, even if the Prisker Prize is the dream that we haven't never thought that we can get it, for us, the, the, the most important achievement is being together after 30 years. So for us, these 30 years working together is our most important achievement. And after these 30 years, what we have done? We have built this universe of shared creativity. For us, it's so important that uh, we have for sure done the architecture, so we create an, an architecture studio in 1998. And uh, after that also, we have created uh, a laboratoire. Uh, so this is a laboratory space of architecture for develop research and creative transversality. So we understand the creativity uh, as wide as it's possible. So it's not only for us creativity is not only in the world of architecture, but uh, everywhere. And also we have created a foundation in order to stimulate socially uh, the, the value of architecture and landscape, and for sure, arts and culture. So, in this universe of uh, the shared creativity, uh, something has happened. So, in the web of the Pritzker Architecture Prize, before the March the 1st, it was announced that on the March 1st at 10 a.m. New York time, 9 a.m. 
Chicago Time, where the Hyatt Foundation is based, and 4 p.m. in Olot Time, the laureate of the Prisker Architecture Prize 2017 will be announced. And after one moment of changing the page of the website, appears this one. So for us was something before we knew, but even at that moment, it was so impressive. We feel so happy. We feel many, it's difficult to, to, to say in words, no? Many, many emotions, different kind of them has appeared. And you know, all our life, all our this 30 years life has passed as a, as a, as a long film, as class has shown for you. So it's a moment that we have remembered many people and people who has died and our origins and what we have done. So it has been really, in our also personal way, a very um, strong or heavy moment. But maybe it's for that that it's a good time to, to review things. And, and maybe the, the first thing or the first project or the, the first step that we can recognize in our 30 years working is this lighthouse. This is a model for a lighthouse. And it shows in a very, for us in a very clear way how we understand architecture. Or, more than how we understand it, how we work with, with it. So, this is a lighthouse, the structure of the, of the lighthouse. And what's a lighthouse? A lighthouse, in a, our dictionary, talks or says that a lighthouse is a tower with a, a light on top. But for us, a, a lighthouse, it was at the end after thinking, talking, discussing, and so on. At the end, it's only a light. In fact, lighthouse this has born as a fire uh, on a beach. So, what is important that? It's important to understand which is the main concept we have to apply for a project. Not taking um, a typology, not taking the things that we know, but thinking about which is the essentiality of, of this project or which is the essentiality of the question that we have to solve, what we have to do. In this case, was a lighthouse. And, and, and the second question that we try always to answer is where we have to do this architecture. And this lighthouse was in a very deep or strong or, or may I say, um, very deep slope um, coming down to the sea. So for us, it was not possible to have a tower in the middle of this, of this slope. At, and, and we decided, according to this site, it was better to extend a hand hanging the light. So for us, always, we try to, 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 to make good answer to this main big questions, what we have to do and where we have to do this. And then, for sure, uh, architecture comes explaining how to solve this. So, we, we live and we work in Olot, which is a, a small town on the north of Catalonia, and it's a uh, volcanic area. And there, there is also uh, a very nice landscape and a landscape that when we say this is a natural landscape, uh, most of the time it is not. It's a landscape that is balanced between nature and human work. So we have learned a lot of things about our, our landscape. And in this image, you can see a nice forest uh, which has a very, very special light. And also, it's a forest that grows uh, in the middle of the bubbles made by volcanoes. And also, we are very attentive also about materiality. In this answer that we answer how we can do this space for life, which kind of materiality we can use it. 
and in our region also, because we have volcanoes, we have basalto. No, this is a very a strong and hard stone, and it's grey. But at the same time, we have um, like ashtrays. We have a very lively little stone. So we have a very big contrast between also the materials that we have in our region. And also people there, they can use a stone or even the material most easy to use, like these thin plates made in a, a very thin uh, steel. So uh, always we have, uh, we can learn from everywhere. It depends a lot what we are asking, what we are looking for. Uh, we can get uh, we can get good answers if we put good questions. And also, uh, we, we, we have um, thought how important is art in our lives, for architecture also, because art works in a way with the same terms as architecture, but without no numbers, without no laws, without no uh, gravity, without no budget. So we work in the same uh, topics than us, but uh, in more freedom. So we have also passed a period of time trying to be very close to, to ours. And then uh, we have also understood how important at the end is to create atmospheres. Not only a building that you can show or that you can move a very big object, but trying to get atmospheres for life. And, and we feel very um, persuaded how important it is to create emotions on people when they are living in those spaces. Because, and this is maybe the, the last slide of this big and long introduction, no? Because what makes the look is to invent perceptual possibilities in the real properties of the stimulus. So, how we can see, how we can look, and what we are asking for. So, this, this nice. Mm, a piece of, of art, we think it shows in a very good way uh, the, the attitude that we try to apply in our work. So, uh, and we work in this space, in Barberi space, which is uh, an ancient foundry, and in this place, bells and sculptures in bronze uh, were done. And it's a place that we try to get time, to, to get calm, to, to have um, a good atmosphere for, for working, trying to be as much as possible close to nature. But for us, when we talk about nature or about place, it's not only a question of uh, nature in terms of trees or grass or green. For us, nature also takes a, a, a wider um, spectrum and it, it talks about also air, sky, light, sun. Also, uh, we have developed uh, a way of... Uh, drawing or a way of making drawings that can easily communicate to our clients, between us and to other people. How we can uh, express in an easy way the, the, the main ideas of the project, the powerful lines that we want to follow and that we don't, do not want to lose in the whole process. It's very easy in the process to lose many things because there are many um, people on there, a lot of uh, travels in the way. But it's important trying to keep 
to keep the, 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 the main idea, the, the force um, topic of the project. In this case, it's a library in, in Barcelona. So what we have tried to get, it was to, to keep Because the, 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 the deepness of the building was so big, we tried to, to keep the light coming uh, inside. So the, the building part was split in two in order to get this light. And also, if we see the, 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 the plan, it was to cut this long distance with light and also to get this inner part of the of the block in Barcelona to have these also these patios in the back having the illusion that the, the city continues and also we are not in an ending point. We can be also in another situation. In this case, we are in a, in a small town close to a river. This is the river, which name is Ter, and, the, and this city is called Ripoll. And they have uh, an old theater that they decided to demolish it and to convert this space into a public space, may I say, in a square, in a piazza. And the, the purpose was to have this square covered for raining days. And we added to this, to this, uh, to this, to this space a passerelle crossing the river in order to make, to make uh, the, the connection between the two parts of the city. One more, um, may I say, more built, more compact, and the other more, more open. And in this case, it was important to see the, the value of the void, of the emptiness. It's good that uh, to, to leave empty spaces or empty places in order that uh, they prepare um, an, a scenario that things could happen there. So then the people in this place are the uh, actors or actresses, are the performers of this space. When, when we think when architecture tries to play uh, too many roles or too many things, then people get um, a little um, behind or, or beside. So trying to, to, to push up the emptiness, the void, and preparing a space that it's possible that things could happen on there, things made by people. or even in a, in a house, in a house which is between walls. Uh, what happens there? Trying to leave uh, the, the whole space, not only to talk about uh, a house or an apartment, about a square meters. It's not a question of a square meters, it's a question of volume of a cubic square, um, square, no, of a cubic meters, sorry. So, um, how can we get spaces connected, but at the same time trying to, to get the, the special um, atmosphere or, or the special corner for different functions? 
what, what we have discovered over the time is that um, the, flexi the flexibility of the spaces, the space doesn't come from a sliding doors or things that you can open or close. We think that if the, 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 the space has a real potential in itself, then you can use it as the way you want. So we try to, to, to prepare a space with enough quality that then you feel good in them and then you can use as you, as you need, as you want. So, in this case, it's um, uh, a park that um, it was a natural space. You see, there are many different projects because at that time, no, it's after these 30 years, we, we have uh, done many different projects because also we, we don't... Uh, and not at all specialized architects. So we have uh, done many, many different kind of projects in terms of briefs or programs. So, uh, and it's nice for, for us also because we discover new things we learn from different kind of, of buildings or interventions. In this case, it was for a, a, a natural site that they wanted to to show this to people and how nice it was only to clean and to make it visible. And then um, uh, uh, playing with nature, with um, the frog or, or the sun, uh, and also how all of these um, weather uh, elements makes the experience different every day and every hour. Or in this case, this athletic track, no? Uh, a big, athlet, uh, a common athletic track, but in this case, with full of trees inside of it. So, when you go there, you have the feeling that you are running uh, in the middle of the nature. So, you are not doing only a sport in order to reduce your time, but you also being mm, close to, to nature. So, uh, in fact, it was uh, to make also a, a link or a relationship with the, the first Greek uh, um, players. And how nice is when you, you don't see uh, the space at once. It's nice you discover it and, and you come into the atmosphere of this space prepared. Or when uh, we are doing a house in a, in a slope and, and, and we try to... to to understand how erosion makes lines with uh, water and, in this case, how the house works in this landscape as a stones that the erosion cannot, cannot uh, or could not remove. So, it's this slope that uh, water, wind, air has um, erosion, but these rocks cannot be erosion and they stand there. And how different it can, it, it can look or it can be seen from the other side. There are almost uh, very simple agricultural um, huts or um, facilities and how uh, the, 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 the print of this erosion uh, coming, no? Like this, so 
this could be said this is a pool, or we can say this is a uh, when when the land comes down, then after the rain, the the water remains there. So to express this quite mm, natural and easy things. We try to make things um, very easy and that they be shown in a very essential and, yes, in a very essential way. Or oh, oh, in this case, uh, we have uh, had a very mm, big area to, to find a way to place a winery. And we decided to use uh, an existing way that link different existing buildings. Why not to use this way to put the winery here? Because also it was the edge between the forest and the valley, or the mountain and the valley, or the forest and the, the, um, the grapes for the wine. And, and in this case, because the wine needs to be um, underneath, it needs to be uh, dark and with a, um, 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 a not very different temperature, but in a very uh, um, the same temperature. So we, we put this this. Um, winery underground and how we can force the feeling to be here underground under the force of the earth uh, under this gravity that or this weight that we that we feel that we are underneath and then we have a, a very big uh, promenade from the entrance to this part this other and then here, here, here. So when, when you are doing this, this path, you don't really know where you are. If it's not so big, you, when you are inside, you don't have really the feeling how big it is or where you are. So in this way, we have a, an aerial part and this is on the, on the ground. We try also uh, to have uh, in the spaces, if it's possible, one material or to use as less materials as possible. We think when we have many different materials, these materials themselves attract your attention. And then you, you, you lose the feeling of the space. When we are working with only one space, then, I sorry, with one material, then the, 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 the space appears. And then it's you and your things that they are mm, doing the movement there and also support the, the color. And then also when you are uh, here underground, you have a space with a very big surprise because when you arrive there, you feel the air. These lines about light, there are also lines of air and lines of rain. Oh, in this case, uh, it was a space for making um, events may I say, weddings or festivals, you know, some parties. And we wanted to have um, the, the, the feeling or trying to, to, to approach the feeling of these uh, festivals or these events uh, in the middle of the, of the nature or in a, or in a forest, no? Like uh, we have all of us the... the, the the painter of the Promenade à la Stillerie, or uh, no, this, this maybe may, we can say some romantic way that we are doing a, a, a party in a forest on a Sunday afternoon. 
So it's for that that we have tried to make um, a very soft uh, canopy, and this canopy takes the, the, the shape that these metallic tubes uh, take themselves by, by their own weight. So, and this uh, canopy, it's cut it with these uh, patios and the trees growing here, we, we hope um, more and more they give shadow in the whole space. So also there is uh, we haven't used any glass there. It was it was more like plastic. It was um, a material that blow. The the it's not a, a clean or, or sharp images. They are more um, blower it. or even in the same complex, we were looking at uh, this space. And now we are going to, to see this space, which is made by five units, that gives you a, an experience of, of night. So, uh, in this case, we have used um, glass and you are confronted with the night and with the darkness. And also the, the, the floor, it's a, a, a glass floor floating over a, a, a volcanic ground or a volcanic garden that passes uh, below. And when you go to the to the bath, you you cross uh, the shower, uh, and the shower is a, a very flat piece of water with a small stones. So you have also this feeling that you are coming into into a river, and then you arrive into the the, the, the main bath, uh, where it's possible to to have a bath for sure. And, and in, in the same unit, we have this restaurant, uh, Las Coles, which also um, explains uh, that we try to work with sides with balance. So we don't try to be hidden and we don't, and we don't try to impose we try always to have like a balance between two equals. So, uh, and in this way of doing, it doesn't matter if it's a, a landscape or if it's an existing building, building. It's always trying to have a balance between the existing and new. Uh, talking, um, it's like if a grandfather is talking with uh, uh, his... Um, um, not sun, but the next one, <laughs> no? <clears throat> and, and how we can, could decide uh, to have only a, a a unique and long table where people could could share also no because in the past also farmer house in the in our region it was very common that people were welcome to to have a, a, a dish so even this um, those houses had um, a cypress this uh, these trees that um, uh, they go sometimes close to the cemeteries. So they were these trees showing how many people, how many people could get in and to have uh, some food. 
So in this idea to have this common table for everybody uh, has, uh, was born this idea to have this main space with this big table. And the, 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 the second and last restaurant that, that we have done is uh, in Barcelona. It's for the Germans Adrià. Mm. And it was in, a, in an interior of the, of in a, in a block uh, in Barcelona. So we have tried to, to create an, an special environment for an special food, because the food that they want to, to achieve is a very um, uh, tasteful and very special, and they wanted to, to provide an atmosphere that helps to um, delight this, this food. So, um, it's, uh, you come from here, and then you can do uh, different parts, so it's... You, you don't see everything at once, you, you discover through the, the different perspectives. And then the floor, it's, uh, it's made in ceramic, and the, and the drawing comes from one of these drawings that I'm showing to you. So it was made very well, no? By they try to, they, they did, uh, they reproduce this hand drawing in the, in the whole floor. This is made by Neolit and I realized that they were one of the sponsors of the, of the lecture. And also, mm, uh, in this aim to, to be involved to everything, also we have participated in the, in the dressings of the, of the waiters really prepared to, to serve uh, their guest. And how different it was no? uh, when, when we did some uh, kindergarten. And there we have tried to, to bring them many, many colors and, and to give a, a, an atmosphere uh, like to be in a in a box of 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 toys, no, uh, to to be to be there with different colors, so children can recognize which class is is theirs, and and having which is so funny, these small houses for the the, the toilet because they they sit down there and they they are hidden. <laughs> full of colors, as this other one, this is another kindergarten that we have tried also to, to make um, this, um, this, it's like a, a pencil um, color box um, here where uh, you can you have all of this around the, the whole building, and also some of these tubes from the exterior. Um, children, if they touch them, these uh, pieces uh, round, no? So, the, when, because it's very common for children when they go uh, along the, the street to, to, to put their hands on the walls, no? So, when they do this in this building from outside, then some of them they react to their hands and then makes them a big surprise. And also here, uh, no, how so we have matched this metallic with these other ones in more, not transparent, but translucent. And also we can get the, 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 the green uh, behind.
and also these colors uh, uh, from inside, from more um, warm to more cold, according to the orientation of the building. And then also they can get many reflections and colors and lights. These uh, pictures are made by a photographer, friend of us, which is a... Um, He's an architect, and, but he loves to take pictures, but not professionally, but uh, for, for himself. And it's nice when, when, when you, you can compare different kind of pictures, because uh, also that shows that you prepare in a space, and then uh, every, um, every scene or every eye or every person uh, take um, or pay attention in different parts of it. So, Mm, and, and they offer to you uh, uh, an image that you haven't seen or you haven't discovered. So it's nice that everyone could find uh, their own experience on this and then to show and then you, you also discover many things. It's, it's so nice. Uh, and then uh, before coming into the, um, the projects that we have shared here in Belgium with Cosé and Goris. We wanted to show you a little bit this Soulage Museum. Mm. Um, you know maybe the painter, and, and he wanted a, a, a museum in a garden and he wanted to have the museum in one floor. So, what is interesting about this project is how this project, for one side, pay attention to the city, making, uh, making paths uh, through it, and how uh, it works so with the city, with the far landscape, and also inside with the different painters that that um, has to be shown, because it was not only the, 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 the last part of his um, work, which is more known, and it's called Outre Noir, but also all of his uh, history in, in painture, and also how the, the restaurant or cafeteria has also a, a a separate entrance, so you can enter from the museum, but also from the exterior, so it can work alone. So we have uh, the main entrance, the main hall, uh, and here there is a, a, a temporary uh, gallery, and then you go down, and then you have the whole museum in the same level with different uh, spaces on it that creates, in a way, in a promenade. So you are in, in, inside a space, as this one, and then uh, you can see that something next is happening. So we are in this next room, and also we see there is another one. And all of this, uh, every of these big rooms or these big halls have different kind of, uh, of natural light. There are different solutions of natural light. And it was so important because the, the, this painter, Sulash, uh, likes to talk about himself. He's the painter of the, of the light. So how that was um, so uh, important. So this was the next, you know, the next room. This big canopy that comes to say, please come in, but it's along the park and also the, the city crosses here. And 
and how it established your relationship with the, the cathedral of this city that it's called Rodez uh, in France. And uh, for sure, to, to have a look on these two projects made uh, in Belgium with Cosé and Goris. The first one is the, um, the Mediatek uh, Bassecroc. I pronounced very mal. <laughs> Uh, and how uh, this building has tried to be very attentive to the to the site, so it was it it goes along the creek the or the canal, and how it prepares a big uh, a square here. It's the main entrance. How it prepares a smaller square in relation to this old fabric, and also how it has this relation with this high level that makes possible to, to cross the city, and how also it, it makes possible to have this relationship at this level of the, of the water. So for me, again, it's very interesting all the time you are confronted to these two levels of the, of the city, and how this building has try to um, understand these two levels and play with them. And also because it's a very big building, try not to be so big and also to be um, very with a lot of vibrations, making a lot of movement uh, in order to... Uh, it was nice because uh, also in, in, in their, um, may I say, weekly or monthly, um, magazine, they make a, a drawing reproducing the, the, the building as saying these are different books, one on top, one on top the other one and never fits. So it, it has this uh, movement that I think that makes a, a vibration and also it links uh, uh, quite well with with water and with the the all um, city with uh, their uh, bricks and also again how inside um, And also how inside uh, uh, we have also this feeling not to have different floors, but trying to get one space where the 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 um, the, the stairs uh, are not only a, a functional uh, part or functional system, but it's also a space where different things could happen. People could uh, sit there and meet and, and work and so on. You can visit it, no? It's so close <laughs> from here. Because uh, also architecture cannot be shown by pictures, cannot be explained by words. You have to go there, come in to visit and, and to feel. So uh, it's quite uh, close. And, and the second, it's the last, and, and, and it links for sure to, to the beginning that we, that we have shown to you this video uh, so nice with this uh, music made um, play by violin violin or violin mm. this is the the crematorium in Hofheide so um, a nice brief no we were really uh, very happy to to do this project, no, because in in this project it's easy to 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 
to fix and to achieve um, the, the thoughts about uh, also the spirituality and, and, and so on. No? And because it was a crematorium, it was nice because it, it's not for any religion, so everybody could go there and do the, um, may I say, the, the last uh, party as you want. But it, it's a place very important, a place to meet people. It's a place where you meet your family, your friends. And so we have thought it was so nice to prepare really um, an, a space for, to meet and a place for um, work. So you meet people, you meet your friends, your family, and you work together. And also you have a view to the, to the landscape, to the sky, and you feel more recovered. And for that, uh, this, this path needs to be protected by rain in this country and by sun. So we prepare this curtain giving you this protection. Uh, we feel uh, so, so happy so, uh, about that and how important it was to have this path around and also this is extended to other parts of the land where you can be buried there in different ways. And how you can come in from the parking area, you can reach the, the building and how this building is on a, on a piece of water. You know, here the landscape is flatter than ours, but also even if it's flat, you have also different um, special characteristics. So in this place, there were the lowest part of the, of the, of the area, so it was nice to keep water uh, where the, the, the building could, could stand. So, um, Nice, nice to meet people and coming. It's in the other way of cloître, uh, no, claustro, no. In the in the in the monastery, uh, you have this claustro, and you can walk around, looking inside. And in this case, you are uh, walking around, but you are looking uh, outside. It's in the other way. and how then you have this feeling or this proximity with elements of nature that makes you, for us, we think it's a good way to be recovered about the sadness of this moment. But um, walking, meeting, and being close to the nature. So nice. You have seen the image before from the video. and what, what will be happen in the next 30 years, no? So, uh, after no, 30 years till now, for the next 30 years, we have done in the past, in the past this piece, in a, this piece of water, it was a, a pool, in a farmer house, which is this one, and now we, we have got the possibility to, to get this house and its forest. It's a, it's a piece of... It shows in very well uh, our roots. No? We have our roots baits in this place. In fact, the, the jury of the Pritzker Prize uh, remarked that how we, we had a strong roots but at the same time, big wings. So, in order to express these roots, we, we feel so happy to be in this, in this place. It has, uh, I think, 100 hectares of forest. So, to develop there a very uh, a strong laboratory of architecture and trying to apply the things that we can achieve in there and also people could come and, and enjoy it. 
and we feel very, at that moment, we feel very, very, um, very interested in, in doing this, this project, our, our dream for the next 30 years. Hoping we can do it and hoping you, you can enjoy it. Thank you so much.